just right here. Just right here. End me. Just end it. I don't want to live like that. And I'm too afraid to pull the trigger myself. It isn't often that you find a person who perfectly exemplifies everything you shouldn't be if you want to be successful not only in your career, but in your life as a whole. A person who has not only failed in almost every aspect of their life, but is also in denial of that obvious fact. It is rare to find such a person because most of us have found at least we have some sort of redeeming qualities. It is rare to find such a person because generally they do not gain an ounce of notoriety. But sometimes, by pure chance, being at the right place during the right time, a talentless hack can be catapulted into the limelight and for a time there is an illusion of success. And that is precisely what happened to Matt Jarbo. But that illusion of success is temporary and they inevitably return to their life of abject mediocrity. Matt runs what can only be described as a spam YouTube channel. He puts out three to five videos a day, which he generously calls news. You aren't getting a great personality, you won't find any hot takes, in fact, on the rare occasion when he does push the envelope, his videos are massively downvoted. No, what you're getting on this channel is a soy-soaked summary of news articles. Simply looking upon the visage of mundane Matt makes me uncomfortable. There's something inhuman about him. He looks very much like a peeled potato, which is undoubtedly the result of winning the inverse of the genetic lottery. Matt Jarbo is beta male incarnate, and like every single beta male bitch, he believes he's owed respect that he never earned, and he harbors a deep-seated rage for those who would criticize and mock him. And it is that very anger that caused Matt to self-immolate in front of a live audience of over 2,000 people. But it appears as if I have jumped ahead of myself. In order to truly understand this man, we need to take a little trip down memory lane. Lock up your guns, dull the edge on your straight razors, and pour your bleach down the drain because this one is gonna be painful. Welcome to the tale of Mundane Matt. In the beginning, there was no Mundane Matt. Only Matt Jarbo. Our little caterpillar got in on the ground level of YouTube with some real revolutionary content. The first publicly available video he published was a student documentary, The Legend of 5-5. The short film was quite riveting to say the least with a top-notch cast, excellent production value, and uncanny acting ability from what I can only assume are a cast of college students. Or, or homeless people. They might have been homeless people. Look, all I'm saying is the other men involved in this didn't exactly hit the genetic lottery either. But our focus isn't on the other guys. Our focus is on Matt. While this short project was his first attempt at creating his own film, it certainly wasn't his last. There are several... interesting projects he created. And while he wasn't the star of every film, he always made an impressive cameo. Let's have a look at young Matthew flexing those acting muscles, really showing off what he's got. Well, yeah, I mean, my friends and I were out fishing this morning. We ended up coming across what we thought was this, you know, moldy pile of reeds in, in the water. And we ended up, you know, kind of just checking it out. And yeah, it turns out it was a body of a girl. And you know, we, we, we pulled the body out the best we could and then notified. Wow, riveting stuff. If I didn't know who Matt was, I might believe that he was some kind of A-lister. I suppose I really shouldn't be giving Matt too much grief over this. He was young, YouTube was new, and he didn't really know what the fuck he was doing. But beyond that, he was putting a bit of effort into being creative. Writing a script, acting, editing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's abysmal garbage, but I can't fault someone for trying. I can laugh at him though, and so can you. But don't take that to mean he wasn't uploading absolute dog shit content at this time as well. Many of his videos are simply horribly grainy footage of video taken at E3 with no commentary on his part. There was also this five episode podcast he did with his friends with really forced, awkward dialogue and an average runtime of about eight minutes. 
I don't really think that qualifies as a podcast, but I suppose when you're such a vapid moron that you can't hold a conversation for more than 10 minutes with your friends, an eight minute podcast will have to do. The only value one can get from this abortion of a podcast is a fairly decent profile shot of Matt's chin without much of a beard, or where a man's chin would be, I should say. Much like his integrity, talent, skill, and creativity, his chin does not exist. There's a video of him singing a Tenacious D song because, of course, he would know every word to a Jack Black song. In it, we can see his hunched shoulders and aggressively large nipples poking through his shirt. He has several odd videos which are simply photo montages, but my personal favorite is a little rabbit hole called Monsters vs. Monsters in Action. This is a wonderful little rabbit hole I recommend you all go and check out. It appears as if Matt attempted to create his own playing card game. I'm not making this up, the website is still up, go check it out for yourself. Here is a description of the game on the front page of the site. Combining the simplicity of war with the exciting elements of a dice game, MVM allows players to play an addicting game where loss can be defeated with a lucky roll of a dice. Each deck is designed to be a one to two player experience. The characters from this game look like something a special needs child would draw, and the gameplay is fucking absurd. Each player draws a card from their deck and places it face up on the table. Then, each player rolls their dice, and the player with the highest roll wins. Look, I understand that I'm essentially reviewing the work of a low functioning autistic man here, but Holy fuck, if the winner is determined simply by the roll of a dice, the cards have no inherent value. They aren't necessary to play the game. He takes the time to have all of this art made, creates elaborate backstories for each of them, and instead of paying the extra penny to print on basic life points, he opts instead to make them decorations in a game of roll the dice. This is pathetic. It is lazy, and it's just one of the many examples of Matt failing miserably at everything he does. For a bit of comedic effect, let's read one of these monsters' profiles. Betty, monster type, Yeti. Backstory, after being separated from her brother, BJ, Betty went to Mount Everest and the Himalayas to train in the low oxygen environment and sub-zero temperatures. Her strengths lay in her ability to scale mountains quickly and create snow flurries to distract her opponents. She doesn't believe in the MVM program, but participates to be closer to her brother. Jesus fucking Christ, I feel like I'm doing a Mr. Medicare Deviance video. Jim. You've known this guy since at least Gamergate. How the fuck did you miss this? This is supposed to be your thing. We've taken a glance at Matt's original channel and we can safely say that it is simply a man throwing whatever he can find against the wall in the hopes that something sticks. It was and is a complete failure. In other words, it's exactly like his current channel but with significantly less subscribers. It isn't clear why, but at some point Matt abandoned this channel and its 183 videos to start over under the pseudonym Mundane Matt, where he would produce commentary videos without appearing on camera. My guess would be that this is because Matt had enough self-awareness to recognize that people couldn't bear the sight of his grotesque form. That they recoiled and covered their eyes like a kidnapping victim, seeing the sun for the first time in 12 years when his face appeared on the screen. And the only chance he had at a modicum of success was to operate anonymously, to try and hide the fact that he is a soy-soaked monstrosity. His new channel was pretty similar to his old one. The quality of his content was god-awful, being recorded in his car on an iPhone. The channel is and was a mishmash of content with no real overarching theme. A video game review here, news there, Kony 2012 exposed videos, and a disturbing amount of videos covering Anita Sarkeesian. I get it. Anita is a shit person pushing shit ideas. Everyone knows that. No one likes her. But how many fucking videos can you do about her before it starts to get creepy? I didn't get an exact count, but I would say he has upwards of 50 videos talking about Anita. Now Matt does have a tendency to talk a particular subject into the ground if one of the videos on it garners any traction. But I can't tell if that is the reason he talks about her so much or if it's his extreme irrational hatred for women, as is common to all soy-filled cucks. I'm leaning towards the latter based on this video. In it, we get a rather prescient piece of information. And she showcased one of my tweets. <laughs> As you can see, it's in the top uh, right hand corner and it says uh, hashtag tropes versus women uh, versus the internet and the internet is finally striking back. Keep flagging, uh, keep fighting, keep flagging. And of course, 
Yes, I'm promoting people to flag for video. Yes, in 2013, Matt was advocating for a false flagging campaign against Anita Sarkeesian. Of course, no one called him out on this for the simple fact that no one was listening. This is pure speculation, but I would venture to guess that Matt's average viewer duration is right around one minute, and the people who do listen all the way through aren't really paying attention, because he doesn't provide any substance. On his best day, Matt is nothing more than background noise. I don't think anyone would even know about this little tidbit if it wasn't for the weaponized autism over at Kiwi Farms. Matt would continue to pump out video after video gaining no real audience, relying on clickbait to get the occasional video to pass more than 5,000 views. It's quite obvious that he would go to either 4chan or Reddit, find a particular thread, and give a summary with no real insight, until one day he tripped and fell face first right into a jackpot. He covered the infamous Zoe post. In an excruciating 15-minute video, he reads the WordPress blog from Zoe's ex-lover, going into detail about the affairs she had and briefly talking about the unethical nature of her relationships. There is no passion in this video. He doesn't make any real hard-hitting points. Like all of his other videos, he's simply reading a news article and giving his own milquetoast opinion. But then, something amazing happened. His video was false DMCA'd by Zoe Quinn for using a still image of her video game as the background for his video. Matt obviously didn't understand how big of a story this was. It was just another routine video to him, but Zoe knew the implications and did her best to smother the story. Because of this, Matt got a mention in a very famous video. A video that, to my understanding, essentially started Gamergate. Episode 1 of the Internet Aristocrats Quinspiracy Theory. Now, I was not around for Gamergate, so I only watched this video a month or so ago when I started researching Mundane Matt, but needless to say, there is quite a stark contrast between this video and the one Matt put out. It is full of righteous indignation about the mistreatment of the video game fans whose back this billion dollar industry was built upon. It demonstrates the underhanded, incestuous nature of games journalists and how they are ruining the consumer experience. And moreover, it is a call to action that inspired people to put a stop to this behavior. I'm told the original video has around 1 million views, but I think we're all well aware that it is gone forever due to Jim's slightly autistic propensity for deleting his channels. Matt took the mention of his name in this video to mean that he played some key role in this massive movement, and as it grew, he began to believe that he was the cause of it. This simply doesn't follow logically. I'm of the mindset that if you are the person who makes a call to action, you are responsible for that action. Matt did not make any call to action. Now if you're of the mindset that the event that sparked the person to make the call to action is the cause, then it still isn't Matt who is responsible, but rather Zoe herself for flagging the video. In reality, Matt being flagged is a small footnote, and that conspiracy video gets made with or without him being flagged. The most important point we should take away from this is that we should 100% blame Mr. Medicare for Matt's spike in popularity. You fucked up big time, bucko. So Matt leverages Gamergate to grow his channel by spamming low effort video after low effort video about it, and constantly whining about not getting the credit he deserves. It's like all of these things. And then you've got, like look at IA for example. Everyone keeps looking at IA. IA, 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 IA has done three goddamn videos. That's it. That's it, right? You know, like the night before I left on my trip, I did a video about like why I'm a gamer. I was again, trying to be uh, passionate. More of it. Yeah, you were very mm -hmm. motivational. Do that. Within 10 minutes of the video going out, 22 fucking dislikes and a bunch of comments on my Ask, S Ask FM calling me a fucking sellout, calling me uh, all these names, trying to stay relevant to the cause. And it's like, you want me to fucking defend you? You want me to fucking come out here and talk about this shit and fucking be on the game gate side? But if I do a video trying to keep people motivated to keep their spirits up because not a lot is really happening because there's no centralized movement, there's no centralized voice, but yet you're going to insult me for it. And so when I say, all right, fine, maybe we need to change tactics and move on to something else because this isn't working, I'm going to get fucking a whole bunch of hate Again? He really doesn't understand the basic concept of quality over quantity, and it is quite evident that he is simply in this to make money, which it turns out is a common theme amongst many of the talking heads involved, and is ultimately the downfall of the movement. This is one of the first examples of what I like to call the Jarbo effect. Simply put, everything he touches turns to shit. He's like some kind of bizarro King Midas, and we will see the Jarbo effect play out over and over again in this video until he finally uses it on himself in one of the most incredible meltdowns I've personally ever witnessed on this platform. Now if we fast forward to just a year after Matt released the video covering the Zoe post, we find him in a bit of a predicament. He's been doxxed by an online trolling group. 
he finally reveals his face to the world and everyone is simply shocked to see that he is an overweight, bitter dweeb in his mid-30s. Approximately six months after that, Matt is swatted. Now based on what happened not a few months prior, who would you say is the most likely culprit to have swatted Matt? Yes, that is correct, Keemstar. Keemstar is obviously responsible for swatting Matt. So Monday Matt gets swatted and proceeds to tell the fucking FBI he thinks Keemstar did it. What was his justification for this? A Twitter argument, apparently. Matt told the FBI Keem swatted him because they were in an argument Two years ago, me and you got into a disagreement on Twitter. We had some Twitter beef, we had some words exchanging back and forth. You ended up getting swatted, and you thought to yourself, oh, I can really get back at Keemstar. I'll just tell the police that he swatted me. And the fucking FBI was at my door questioning me about it. And people call Keemstar a rat. Absolutely pathetic, Matt. You're lucky Keemstar didn't track you down and give you a reason to report him to the FBI, you pathetic, vindictive little bitch. Now, we're approaching closer to the current events surrounding Mundane Matt, the one still in recent memory. Probably my personal favorite video of Matt's and probably the most well-known meme of him besides the infamous Turn Off That Pesky Ad Block from his original channel trailer, and this is his YouTube play button unboxing video. This man of 35 years opens his reward from a company who has been him and the vast majority of other content creators over the table and made it nearly impossible for them to make a living on this site. And at the sight of the generic form letter they send out to everyone who reaches this arbitrary goal, he breaks down into fucking tears. I don't fault him for crying. I really don't. When you have such little self-worth, when your entire identity is tied to your online persona, I can understand getting emotional about being told you've accomplished something great no matter how disingenuous it may be. What gets me is that this grown man recorded himself crying, edited, reviewed it, and double-checked the final cut and still thought, yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. This is a great idea. I'm gonna call it right now. There's no way Matt had a strong male role model in his life. There is no way that any decent father could let their son grow up to think being an emotional wreck on camera for thousands of people to see is a positive thing. Later in the year, Matt found himself embroiled in yet another controversy, which is of course the Candid App shilling by the skeptic community. The Candid App was pitched as a free speech friendly social media platform that used an AI to determine which statements were true and which were not. This little click on YouTube, which pitched themselves as skeptics, as the ones who question everything in noble pursuit of the truth, accept accepted this premise and shilled this bullshit for anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, signing a non-disparagement clause that lasted two years. The very people who have purportedly made their mission to champion freedom of speech will sell their own away for a few measly shekels. And yes, Matt was one of those who participated. Luckily, not everyone was so quick to sell out. Harmful opinions made it his mission to find out the truth about this app. He discovered an obvious bias, whereas if you enter in the app, kill all black people, the post will be flagged. But if you enter, kill all white people, the post will go through just fine. He also revealed that the creators of the app were former Google employees and suggested that it might not be the best idea to help someone with ties to Google cultivate an AI that can recognize the type of speech you and your fan base use. What did these skeptics and our brave hero Matt do? They roundly ignored and even attacked him, most likely for pay, calling him a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. Everyone except Baring, of course, who helped him uncover much of this bullshit. Matt's video on Harmful, which is surprisingly still up, was downvoted into the dirt. As it turns out, Harmful was right about the suspect nature of this company. They eventually sold the AI back to Google and it is most likely being implemented in demonetizing the videos of the spineless sellouts who shield it, which is poetic justice as far as I'm concerned. And did any of these cunts who made a group effort to discredit harmful opinions ever apologize to him? Of course not. That would mean they had integrity. Are you starting to get it now? Are you starting to see the Jarbo effect? Wherever you smell shit, Mundane Matt isn't far away. Who can forget about Kilroy, the free speech convention tailored specifically for lay skeptic community, which turned out to be a giant scam to line the pockets of the resident whole based mama. You can't really be too upset about Matt initially endorsing it. I think most of the people in his community did, but unlike the vast majority of speakers who dropped out when the true nature of the event was revealed, Matt wrote it right into the ground. And to what end? 
He didn't gain any exposure or subscribers for it. In fact, I would venture to guess that he actually lost subscribers by refusing to admit that it was a complete failure. The only thing he got in return for participating was mockery and trolling. As you can imagine, after years of failure and mockery, Matt has become quite a bitter person. He puts on a facade of confidence and pretends everything is just fine, and you may be fooled into thinking that as well. You see, his channel, it has over 150,000 subscribers, but none of them are loyal fans. Matt doesn't cater to his subscribers. For some reason, he thinks that more subscribers means more cash, but his average view count tells a different story. Make no mistake, Matt isn't making more than $1,000 a month in ad revenue, and that's being generous. Not to mention his Patreon is a barren wasteland. Let's not forget that he lives on the West Coast, so don't believe him when he says he isn't struggling financially. This is all he does for income. This man is 100% being supported by his wife, who works her ass off to put food in his fat gut while he sits at home and plays on the internet. That is pathetic. At the end of the day, when you don't cater to a specific audience on this platform, when you instead try to appeal to everyone, you end up appealing to no one. He puts out three to five videos a day with no particular theme, and one of the most difficult parts of putting together this video is trying to sift through his massive catalog of content. He has over 4,600 videos on his main channel, which actually acts as an inadvertent shield against mockery and criticism. The very thought of sifting through this monumental pile of garbage was incredibly daunting which is why it took me over two months to finally make this video. And it was only thanks to the people behind the scenes who had been keeping tabs on him that it was possible for me to make this video. But I'm glad I waited until now to finally go through with it, because if I finished the video when I had initially started, the story wouldn't have been complete. For quite a while now, there has been speculation that Matt would flag videos that were critical of or mocked him. In 2017, he pulled down a meme by Nick Coleman, who got his hands on Matt's self-described feature-length film, which... Let's be honest, it's just two fat dipshits with a camcorder in too much time. He justified this by saying it would hurt his brand if someone googled Mundane Matt and one of the results was Mundane Matt kills someone. Matt, you don't have a brand to defend. A bit ironic that someone who became popular after being silenced by DMCA is so quick to use it on others. But he will own up to that. After all, the clip wasn't fair use. It was a petty thing to do, but he did have the right to do it. The real issue was the fact that any time someone uploaded a video mocking him or talked a little bit of shit about him on a stream, those videos would almost instantly get flagged down. The Morning Kumite, Failure in the Morning, Godwin Son, Dame Pesos, Ethan Van Scriver, Maxwell Kimball all had their channel struck after poking fun at Matt. And some of these people stream for a living, and if your channel gets struck, your right to stream gets revoked for 90 days. But golly gee shucks, I guess we can't really blame Matt. We have no evidence proving it's him, and he is a part of the skeptics after all. How can you expect his peers, who are so logical and ethical, to make the call that he's probably an underhanded rat who doesn't believe a fucking word of what he says. Inductive reasoning, you say? Don't be absurd! Here on YouTube, you can only call out someone if you have 100% definitive proof that they did what they are accused of. Well, it's a good thing that this water-headed dipshit went on the kill stream after their stream was struck down for playing one of Matt's deleted videos. Did he clear his name? Well, he sure didn't convince anyone on the stream of his innocence. Okay, this is some old dumb shit. I'm not gonna deal with it tonight. I'm just going to put out my statement, go run this errand, pick up these boulders, do my shit, hang out with my kid. And then all of a sudden I get, I get accused of, of this shit. So then I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but okay. Matt, you, you're like, you realize how fucking ridiculous what you're saying. So it's like, <laughs> I didn't flag the stream. I was out picking up boulders with my kid. <laughs> like, what are you saying? What the fuck is Okay. Uh, one guy was saying that your kid's fucking dead, you know? And it's all like, look, I'm not going to fuck around with that shit. That shit's fucking stupid. You want to come after me? Come after me. My kid did nothing. She's eight months old. She can't, she can't even fucking crawl. Matt, look. Where was that? Where was so, that? I was with my kid all day, man. I was picking rocks all day, man. People are threatening me and my family, man. Cry me a fucking river, Matt. Nut up or get off the internet. People don't care enough about you to do anything to you in real life. You're a literal fucking nobody. He almost got away again. He almost managed to lie to a panel of seven people for nearly two hours. But at the last minute, Ralph's co-host, Zidane, informed Matt that he could actually pull up his report history and prove his innocence. There's the way you can show your reporting history on YouTube. I'll link it in the chat. So if you didn't do it, they should have nothing in it, correct? Oh, the plot thickens. Uh huh. No, hold on. I'm like, I'm reading the article you sent. Yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. At least I think I know what he's talking about. There, there are ways you can show that. Got 
really quiet. It no, got I'm, super I'm, quiet. I'm reading. I'm reading. It's, it's literally like seven sentences, buddy. That silence speaks volumes. After what felt like an eternity of trying to squirm away, this maggot finally showed everyone what we already knew. That he was a lying, flagging piece of shit. Okay. You guys see it? I yeah. see a lot of Dane so, Pesos so videos. A lot of Dane Pesos. It's, it's the last Andy Worski. I see a Worski It's the video. shit, the shit Worski. about me when oh, the... Oh, you flagged the Kumite started. too. A couple times. I got, fuck? Yeah, it was a lot of, it was, a, like I said, a lot of shit's gotten under my skin, and I've acted very inappropriately, and that is, it's Talk all within the last few months, and yeah, and I owe people uh, uh, an apology. So, but if you notice, everything is active, nothing's been taken down. Except for that uh, one, information. I see about failure, I, don't know, I see I don't know which one. You know what? Scroll back up. Uh, you know, uh, just That's to it. make... It's, it's the okay. ones in the, it's in the last few months, I've just been... In a very Wait, bad place. But, but let me ask you. There's one by Swedish Mate that was an archive video. Looks yeah, like. Swedish Mate is an archive channel. Confirmed flagging Dame Pesos. Failure. Tonka. Andy Worski. Swedish Mate. A fucking clip channel. Swedish Mate. Not to mention the reports he undoubtedly removed in the 20 minutes it took him to finally share his screen. But he asked for mercy because the poor guy was having a rough time. Yeah, I've been in a bad place for a while. Um, I have... Uh, uh, remember, it's been it's been it's been a long time. It's been a very 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 long time. Uh, last summer, I was uh, I was I was contemplating suicide quite often. It hasn't gotten much better. I've tried. Uh, I've allowed myself to get angry. I've allowed myself to do things that uh, I should never do. Um, and it's being legitimate, heart to heart. Swear to God, I've. Um, He's been thinking about killing himself lately, so it's okay that he tried to rob other people of their livelihood. Listen to me, Matt. No one who is actually suicidal talks about it. They don't use it as an excuse for being shitty people. You said that as an excuse, and not a single person buys it. You disingenuous piece of shit. Delete your fucking channel, get a real job, and try to make something of yourself. Because as far as YouTube is concerned, as far as the internet is concerned, you're a joke. You're the village idiot, and you have no chance of recovering from this. And do not even think of flagging this video because if you do I swear to god I will turn off that pesky ad block 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 turn off that pesky ad block